added to that were a razor-sharp brain, total self-confidence and the ability to ignore criticism. He joined Ferrari in 1974 and immediately set about harnessing the team to his own ambition and capacity for hard work. Well, I came from BRM basically, which was a good car. So when I joined Ferrari at the end of 73, and we together worked really hard to make that car better. And I think I won my second Grand Prix, my first Grand Prix in my life. And from 74 on we were just going like hell. In 1975, Lauda won the World Championship with five victories. But a year later at the Nürburgring came the fiery accident that so nearly killed him. Several brave drivers dragged him from the flames, but he wasn't expected to live. When I came to the hospital, you know, you, you feel a kind of very, you're very, you feel like you're very tired and you would like to go and sleep. But you know, you know, it's not just going sleeping, it's something else. Incredibly, he was racing six weeks later, but at the final round in Japan, Nikki voluntarily retired. Now, you're an unusual chap in, in, in many ways, and one of the ways in which you've been unusual is to have the strength of character in 76 to say at Fuji, the weather conditions are ridiculous. You could have won the World Championship if you hadn't driven out of the race. Absolutely right, but I did come there after nearly being dead at the Nürburgring, so I just was not prepared to take the chance under these terrible weather conditions, if you do remember. Yes, sir. If I would have known the rain would stop, yeah. which was not the case in the beginning, because the problem there was that for about four hours we delayed the race, all of us, because rivers were running over the circuit. And we, did, we all said we can't race. It was so bad. Half an hour later, the rain stopped. The race got a little better. And James, in the end, finished, I don't know, fourth or something, and won the championship by one point. But from my point of view, it was a year where I had my accident. I was happy to be alive. Okay, I lost one championship by one point, but I don't think I did that bad. At 77, you won the championship again, and then you left the team that you had made and joined Brabham. Why did you do that? Uh, the reason was that 76, after I rang Ferrari from Fuji and told him what I told you Inside now, Ferrari. Inside Inside. Ferrari. Yeah. I told him, uh, it was pretty obvious that he said, okay, I accept your decision, I'm fully packing you up. I didn't lose the oh, race because yeah. I was a chicken in Fuji, yeah. I lost the race right. because I nearly killed myself in yeah. a Ferrari. And then Bernie came along and offered me a drive in the Brabham Alfa Romeo, which was the opposition, and therefore I left. And then in the end, looking backwards, it was a mistake, because I could have won more championships maybe well, with Ferrari. We all make mistakes. When did you first know about the Brabham fan car? The Brabham fan car, I was told by Gordon Murray when he came up with the idea. Yeah. And I remember very well the first test we did in Grand Hatch with it, in the small circuit. And I was astonished when they warmed the car up and the car went boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yes. What the hell is going on here? When the race started, I couldn't believe it. I could pass everybody around the outside, <laughs> took the lead and won the race. Lauda won the fan car's only race and at the 1979 Canadian Grand Prix sensationally walked away from the sport. Just before practice started in Montreal, he talked to Jackie Stewart and possibly some of the reasons for his decision were already in his mind. As long as you are in motor racing, it's more boring it is in one way, because you know all the people, everything is, everything is the same all the time. And it needs special motivation. You know, like if you start when you're 25 years old or 22 years old, you start motor racing, the motivation is there because you want to get in, you want to know everything, you want to win and all that. So if you know everything, you have won a lot of races. You always need new motivations to bring the the push-up you need to be successful. So, no more driving Bernie Ecclestone's Brabham's. For two years, Nicky concentrated on building up his own airline, a whole new challenge. So you start the airline, you're out, you're out of racing, 81, 80 and 81. You join McLaren and you said, I will win my third race. And you won your third race at Long Beach. So first of all, I wanted to see after two years, can you drive again? because I retired because I was fed up driving. Yeah. And suddenly I won the, the third race, Long Beach. So now everybody was running after me again. And said, oh, we must sign you up for three years. Said, Listen, sign me up for this year. You didn't want to sign me up for this year first. And if you want to negotiate next year, you have to pay more money. 
you won your third championship at Portugal and I interviewed you and Alain uh, and you won it by very clever crafty tactics during the race. Yeah, tactics I wouldn't say. It. My problem was Frost always out-qualified me because he could handle better the boost increase for one lap at the time. We had 1,200 horsepower for qualifying and 600 for the race. And what nobody knows, after two laps, I had my right turbocharger break. So I was stuck in traffic, like you do not believe. The only thing I told myself clever before the race, Nicky, do yourself one favor today. Don't you do a mistake to break your wing, touch a car, drive with your head. Yes. And this is what I did. I didn't take any chances of breaking and doing stupid mistakes in the panic of, of going for a championship. And thank God, then when Mansell retired with his brake problem, yeah, yeah. I finished second and there I was. Yeah.